Okay, this is the 21st of December 2006. We have Pat Condon, Bob, Dick, Tyson, Wayne. <laughs> and um, what we have here is chitin. This chitin came from Louisiana, shrimp shell chitin. We have reconstituted it by adding a little bit of water. The material came in and been run across a screen. Um, we're going to run this material in a twin screw six screw press. Here's the motor and drive. The liquid we squeeze out will come out through this bar type screen. And there you can see the bars. You might even see a screw going by, a flight of a screw occasionally in here. Uh, the cone right now is open. You can see two screws. Here's the two screws turning, counter-rotating. They overlap. You'll see the overlap here in the inlet hopper. Uh, we've got it set for 8 RPM, very slow. We have a VFD on the press, so we can change the speed. In the background here, we have a uh, fluidized bed dryer, witty, and uh, it'll be used for drying the press cake that comes out of the screw press. Here's the uh, feeding action in the inlet hopper. We're just getting started. There's the discharge. Here's where the screen starts. And you can see a screws turning right here. It's got very positive feeding. The, uh, Material has no tendency to bridge or slip. It's going into the press very well. It's got a lot of water in it, so we're squeezing the heck out of it. Uh, probably have not stored part. No, the cone is not really opening yet. Maybe down in there, uh, I can see it. You can't. Uh, this stuff is just uh, we operated with the cone open to start with. Liquid coming out pretty well from one end of the screen to the other at this stage. Looks like I'm getting some liquid through the drain. Looking at that same drain, yes, I've got uh, some in this pan down here. Coming from the cone bushings, that's normal, that's why the pan is in there. Okay, the cake is coming out pretty uniformly all the way around the cone, top, bottom, and sides. So I'm going to increase my air pressure. I've been at 15. I'll take it on up. Take a big jump, go to 40. And we'll see. I took the RPM up because it was a little jerky at 10 hertz. Took it up to 15 hertz. So we're now running these screws at 12 RPM. The watering there you can see it, it's one end of the other pretty well. We need to feed in the rest of the material. We have a chaser material, uh, pine shavings, of course. Okay, we ran all the sample and we threw in one five gallon pail. Oh, uh, it's going, there's a problem, but uh, we're running the end of the sample cake. Uh, we'd have to chase it out with more sawdust. There's the cake we got, the press liquid we got, and we're running at full plant air pressure, which is probably over 80 psi. Okay, uh, this is after the first run. Uh, had some trouble with the motor, seven and a half horsepower wanting to stall out at low hertz, uh, 10 and 15. It may have persisted at 60 hertz. Another problem is this cake right in here between the two screws is packed in unusually tight. Um, I can't really break it loose with my fingers. Um, not sure what the solution to this is, but uh, I think we've gone through this before. The cake that was real hard coming out, I opened the cone for this last test, uh, for the, not test, but just to get rid of this stuff. Some of it was real hard and clumpy I saw coming out. Yeah, 
Now here's a piece. Well, this stuff still disintegrates readily. And that was the worst I saw. I've got a few wood shavings in here. Uh, so this is a contaminated sample. It uh, breaks up pretty readily. Even the worst of it. We're feeding the press cake in a metering screw. This was the press cake we got. What are we doing here? I'm just calibrating the screw feeder. This oh. is our control of feed rate. Okay, calibrating the screw feeder to uh, set the feed rate into the press, into the dryer. Okay, here we are feeding the dryer. Nothing coming out yet. Starting, uh, there's some action. See it fluffing? There's uh, 200 F, I'm reading. B. Stop moving. We're not getting anything out the discharge yet. is sure going extremely smoothly. The temperature is still uh, around 200. On that gauge, yeah, I'm reading 160 down at the discharge. I'm reading room temperature. Here we are at the feeder end as this material falls and goes into the airstream. There's some clumps there. You'll see they get broken up as they go through. We just grabbed a sample through that port. Probably for moisture analysis. The reason this was at room temperature is it's cooling air. They're cooling the product down at the end of the cycle before it comes out. Okay, I cleaned out the press by running it with the cone open at 60 hertz for at least 10, 20 minutes, one paying attention. What I found was that it had cleaned itself out on its own accord. Uh, how do we prevent a solid mass from forming in here? I think a longer pointed cone. Uh, we still have to be able to stop off, but we'd like more room to drop stuff out there. Uh, we need to see what we've done in the past. I know this isn't the original cone that was on this press, and it wasn't put on for chitin. Okay, uh, 
this, I figured out we have a cold air here, hot air here, vibrator here. The hot air is here is the furnace control. Not much, two buttons. And a gas control. These are typical uh, gas controls for a burner. Here's a pilot light and a burner and igniter. So this is where the fire is, and that hot air is flowing into the bottom of this uh, dryer. Okay, the machine periodically uh, uh, has actuators that dump out a load of dry stuff. I'm on the other side. Here's the this ductwork, and the way they get cold air to come in on the discharge end, right there, and hot air down here, is they have two ducts, uh, first duct, and a second duct, and all they have to do is they have one blower common to the manifold up here, they turn off this burner, turn off the burner, you get cold air at the discharge, keep the burner in on the far one, you get hot air at the inlet. We have some clumps, they tend to roll to the bottom of the pile. The material feeding out now is uh, light brown compared to the pink that came out in the beginning. The pink was the lines that blew through, and this was the stuff that was stuck in the dryer because it is clumpy. So now we're looking at a deep clumper, uh, which would prevent that from occurring. Anyway, that's a deep clumper. Here we're looking, oops, we're looking at a much larger model. I see uh, combustion burners up there. That's strange. Uh, anyway, it's a more compact uh, version of a dryer. About the same as what we're looking at here. Just a, an option being considered. Okay, the lumper in process. We're taking some of the lumpy material here. Okay, still got some so lumps. So basically, you can see where the lumps have been broken. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if they're wet, it's going to do that much better a job, you know? Okay, we picked out the worst of the wet press cake. This had to be the heaviest pump from the very end of the pressing action. And then it was stuck in the press. And it looks pretty good.